Hello everybody, it's Professor Fiore. In this video, we are going to talk about a voltage-controlled resistor. In other words, a resistor, the ohmic value of which is controlled by a separate voltage, a control voltage. Well, it turns out we're not actually going to use a resistor. We're going to use a JFET. So let's take a little review here on our JFET characteristic. First of all, right, here's our family of curves, drain curves for the FET. This is what we're used to seeing. On the horizontal, drain source voltage. On the vertical, drain current. And each one of these green lines is for a specific value of VGS, right? So the biggest current we expect to get is at VGS equals zero. That's the top one. And this current out here, this max current is IDSS, right? The drain current with a shorted gate source, zero volts. And as we go more and more negative, as we go down toward VGS off, right? These currents drop, 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 drop. And we have three basic regions in here. We have our constant current region, which is where we normally operate an amplifier. We have a breakdown region, don't like that. And back in here, we have something known as the ohmic region. Now, if we zoom in on this ohmic region so that we're only looking at maybe 50, 100 millivolts worth, this is what we see. This is unlike what we would see with a bipolar transistor. Each one of these curves, right, corresponds to one of these. So I've got the first few labeled, right? VGS is zero, minus 0.5, minus one, and so forth, all right? And what we see is, for this fairly narrow range, like I said, 50, 75, maybe 100 millivolts, this is a straight line. These are straight lines. So you have a current voltage characteristic that's a straight line. Well, guess what? That's a resistance, right? That's what we get if we plot the current voltage characteristic for a simple resistor. But what we notice is, right, this really steep thing, this purple one, that occurs at VGS equals zero. Now, when you get a lot of current for a certain voltage, what we're saying is that's a small resistance. And of course, if we get a lot less current for that same voltage, we're implying that's a large resistance. So what we can see is as this voltage gets more and more negative, as it goes towards VGS off, the resistance of the FET, meaning from the drain to the source, is getting larger and larger and larger, right? So we have here for VGS off, we have something called the RDS on, which is the minimal resistance that we'll see. And that will depend on the FET. That might be 100 ohms, you know, it might be 10 ohms, might be several hundred ohms, you know, it all depends on the FET. But as we go more and more negative for that gate source voltage, which if you haven't figured it out yet, that's the control voltage. As we go more and more negative for that, this flattens out and that resistance, that RDS value gets larger and larger and larger until finally, you know, we're talking mega ohms. All right. The trick here is that we have to keep VDS fairly small. VDS has to be, like I said, typically under 100 millivolts. Otherwise, you're going to start to get a lot of distortion because we're going to start seeing the curvature that we have back here, right? So that's, that becomes nonlinear. All right, we can use this in a very simple sort of voltage divider arrangement. Here we go. So I've got my source. Notice, small input, only 50 millivolts. I've got a divider resistor over here of 10K. And then down here is my JFET. So this is controlled by a little DC voltage. Now I've thrown in this RG, you don't really need this, but I've thrown this in in case you want to breadboard this particular circuit. I, I threw this in really just as a safety valve in case you accidentally put this power supply on uh, positive at the top, positive toward gate, because you would wind up forward biasing this junction and at three volts in this case, you'd blow it up. So that's just there as a safety valve to to minimize the current flow. As it is with a reverse bias potential, the drop across RG is gonna be pretty much zero, all right? All right, so that's some resistance. We can just think of this as this RDS value. And then we have our load out here, which is, 10, which is 100K. So essentially what ends up happening is we create a voltage divider between this 10K and this. Now I have to pick a value of our divider that's between the extremes of what the FET can do. In other words, I want something that's a lot bigger than um, the RDS on, the minimum value, 
but it also has to be less than whatever my load is. Um, that's the only way I'm going to get a, a wide range of control over here. All right, so the uh, off value, the VGS off for a, a J111 is uh, around four volts. I think it's negative four and a little bit of change, but I'm throwing in a three volt control and we can see what's going to happen here. I'll throw in a transient analysis. Okay, let's get a, uh, there we go. Okay, so my input 50 millivolts green and my load is the maroon. You can see there's a pretty small potential here. I am going to zoom in on it so that you can see it a little bit better. All right, so that looks like it's eh, maybe around a millivolt. So this resistance, if you wanted to, we could sort of calculate the voltage divider rule backwards here. But we're obviously getting, in this case, about 2% of the input signal, right? I got 50 millivolts in. We're only getting about two, uh, excuse me, one millivolt, about 2% coming out of here, right? So this is a value, a resistance value that's considerably less than 10K, all right? All right, what if we go to a somewhat larger value, right? So I'll go to, let's say, three and a half. So we're closer to VGS off. What do you think that's going to do? All right, we're closer to VGS off. Where should the resistance go? Resistance should be a little bit bigger, meaning the voltage divider effect isn't going to be as bad. Okay, again, I'm going to zoom in on this. Okay, so there's two and a half, so we're definitely above where we were before. Right here, this was one millivolt. We could see we were not quite at a millivolt. And this one, you know, there's two and a half, so that's one and a quarter, so we're larger. Maybe I'll bring this down to four volts. What do you think is going to happen? Hey, look at that. Now we're a pretty sizable portion of whatever that input is. All right, so there's 25 millivolts. That's half the signal. Here's a quarter of the signal. So, you know, we're somewhere around maybe a third of the signal, right? And if we went the other way, if I brought this down to, you know, like one volt, let's say, now we're looking at a value that's closer to the RDS on that minimal value. And whoop, right, that's pretty much disappeared. We'll just zoom in on that and see what we get. Okay, so again, you know, there's one millivolt, so we're under half, maybe a third, a quarter of a millivolt. We've got a pretty wide range here, all right? How big can you actually get? Well, if you turn the FET off, all right, so I'll put in five volts for that, because I know that's beyond what the off, the VGS off is. Now you'll get the maximum resistance for the FET, and you're going to be set with whatever the, the divider is between the load and this R, R div, this R divider, all right? Which in this case, you can see uh, you got about a 10 to 1 ratio, so you're going to lose about 10% of the signal. That would be the, sort of the best case, all right? And that's exactly what we're seeing here. All right, I'll just put a uh, cursor on. And there you go, 45. So we're down... From 50 millivolts, we're down to 45 millivolts, right? About 10% as expected, okay? All right, so, you know, you might ask, well, why do this? Why not just put a rheostat in here, right? Why not just have a potentiometer? I'll just hook it up as a rheostat or just use a rheostat as it is as a pot, you know, you know like a typical volume control kind of configuration. Well, there are some good reasons to do this. The first of all is you don't have any moving parts, right? I mean, you know, a, a normal potentiometer is an electromechanical device. You know, it's got moving parts. This doesn't. This has no moving parts. So, you know, as far as it wearing out, this is going to last way longer than a mechanical pot will. It also won't get dirty like a mechanical pot can get dirty. And if this was, for example, an audio application, a dirty pot means you're going to get a scratchy, noisy kind of result every time you turn the knob, all right? So that's, that's a good thing. You can also change this programmatically. In other words, this DC control voltage that I'm using over here, 
could be from some other circuit. It could be from, uh, you know, like a microcontroller or something. I want to program what this resistance is. And of course, this thing can also ramp up and down. It can change much, much more rapidly than a mechanical pot could. It could also be uh, actuated remotely. In other words, I just have to send a wire to this thing. So physically, this thing could be removed from the operator, which is not so easy to do with a potentiometer, right? You'd have to have this part near the operator, and then you'd have to run a signal, you know, signal wire out to you know, whatever the heck this is. So there are a number of, of good applications for this, all right? It's a very simple way of doing it. Um, again, the limitation is the input signal size has to be fairly small. So with this 50 millivolt signal, things do work well. You try to put in a big signal, you try to put in a couple of volts, you're going to start seeing um, the FET moving out of that ohmic region. You're going to get some curvature. The end result is distortion. All right. Okay, beauty. Any questions, put them in the comments. Take care, and we'll see you next time.